let's dig into the solo ideas that one could use, that I use, that anyone could use over night and day. Um, and as I mentioned to you, because the first chord is not a D minor, it's a D minor 7 flat 5, that one note, this, here's the difference between the two chords. So only one note is shifting the A to the A flat, but that one note makes a big difference. So uh, D minor 7 flat 5, is actually the seventh chord of the key of E flat major. So I would use E flat major. Okay, so I'd use E flat major over that, and then we come into the G7, um, which you could actually stay on that scale for the G7 because that will automatically give you some nice altered tones over the G7. And then we come to a C major, which you can arpeggiate the C major 7, or you could play a C major scale. Um, and that's going to sound really great, or a C Lydian scale, just it adds a little more color instead of this. You have a raised fourth degree, so that's a that's another sound that you could use. Then we come to the, the what I call this walk down section of the song, D seven to F minor seven, E minor seven, D sharp diminished, and a lot of times there I'm just playing off the arpeggios, so D seven. F minor 7, E minor 7, and then D sharp diminish. And then I come to the D minor 7, G7, C, and so at that point there, I'm just back to a 2, 5, 1, and C. C major scale will work great over there. So the reason that sometimes you just do arpeggios, guys, and just pull out a few notes from the arpeggios is when the chords are moving, when you have different key areas, and the chords are moving you know, rapidly, in this case, even if you play the song slowly, you've only got four beats on each chord. So rather than try to play a whole bunch of complicated scales, which can sound you know, busy and uh, unnecessarily cluttered. It's really good to use arpeggios there. So, um, you know, something I've talked about throughout this course uh, is that I highly recommend uh, for an in-depth study of arpeggios that you pick up a copy of my Mel Bay book, Guitar Arpeggio Studies on Jazz Standards, and my True Fire course, uh, Jazz Song Practice Playbook. Uh, because in both of these, um, you know, in the book and in the True Fire course, I really go into an in-depth study of arpeggios and, and how to play them and you know how, how to practice them and work with them. So uh, when we come to the next section of the song, we have a modulation to the key of E flat major. You got an E flat major seven and we could actually play the E flat major seven arpeggio. There was E flat major. I added the the nine and the six there, but basically, so there's the E flat major seven arpeggio, or you can use the scale. And then the next chord goes just down to C major, and at that point you come back to a C major scale. And so we've got those two different scales, and again, super important to practice your scales up and down the neck so that you're prepared to, to switch keys. Anywhere you are in the neck, you can switch into a new key. Um, and the nice thing with E flat major to C is that um, basically it's just down a minor third. So for example, if you're playing a phrase, that's something that you'll hear me utilize it's a common soloing technique to take a phrase and then, you know, a call and response with yourself, play that same phrase in a new, um, you know, in this case, it's going to a new chord, but they're the same type of, it's going to a new key, but they're the same type of chords. They're both major seven chords. So that's something that you're, that you're going to hear me do, uh, no doubt, uh, when I do my rendition of the song. So, uh, and then we come back to this, the last part of the song. It's the same thing as the earlier section. We've got D7. F minor 7, E minor 7, 
D sharp diminished, and that's going to be the same thing I suggest where you play over the arpeggios as in the first section. And that's it. That's the whole song.